Hi everybody, Jo here again. Welcome to another Technique Tuesday and thank you so much for joining me. Do you know what? It really is lovely just coming here and spending time with you. Now, I don't know if you've seen, but at Lavinia on the website, we've now got these fabulous round cards. I love circular card designs and we've got them available in three colours. But the reason I'm popping in today is... I've made these cards recently and when I put them on our social media sites, our Lavinia For You site, I got so many um, crafters asking me, this one especially, how I made the card and actually saying that they struggled with this sort of garland wreath design. So I thought, Do you know what, that gives me an idea for Technique Tuesday. And what I'm going to do today, if you bear with me, is I'm going to come in and show you three different ways of making one of these wreath cards. Just so that depending, you know, I always think crafting, you know, it's a bit like cooking. Some people like using an arga, some people prefer an electric oven, some people it's gas. Well, some people it's even a barbecue. But do you know what? Whatever is your obviously forte and what you prefer that's totally up to you and i find crafting very much the same we all have different ways different techniques that and, and little hints and tips of things that we prefer and it works well for us so i thought i'd come in and just show you three different sort of technique ways of of coming up with the design and we're going to start with this one first and I'm just going to use, I've got some card here, and this is just multifarious card, and it's five and a half inches by five and a half inches. I nearly slipped into a bit of my colloquial tone then and said five and a half. <laughs> so I'm, I must apologise about that. <laughs> I try to speak properly when I'm on here chatting with you. But the odd little colloquial bit slips out every so often. So for this one, we're going to start with the holly stamp. Now, it's not the pound holly, there's a larger holly stamp, and I find this so useful. In fact, I'll be very surprised if it clings to my block because I use it so much. And we're going to use the old Shady Lane ink, or Shady Lady as I call her. And that's just the green, the Versafine Claire. Now, for this one, we're going to do it um, by eye, or again, as we say up north, by eye. And for me, the best way to do this, and there are lots of different stamps that this works well with, the snow shrub, but I would use a larger piece of card, um, the uh, comb branch that I'm going to use later, so many of our Lavinia stamps that you can use this for this design. But what you need to do, we're basically going to stamp in like a clock face. So we're going to stamp at 12, 3, 6 and 9. And also you're going to hold your stamp the same way and you're going to eyeball the distance here. Now, in fact, it might be easier for, for you to see, which has only just occurred to me. If I put a piece of coloured card under there. Now, I'm not sure, but I'm hoping that might be easier. You know, if I'd thought about it, I could have thought about that earlier. So I'm going to stamp up. And this design for me is fabulous for batch card making. It really is. If you need some quick Christmas cards, you could do a set of them very easily like this. Now, my head may come over, so I do apologise. What I want, I want a gap of about, say, a centimetre-ish there. And I'm going to put this, I want this in the middle of the card, sort of sideways, and about a centimetre. And I'm going to stamp. And lift it up. And that distance there, in my head, I want to try and get that the same. So we'll turn it round. And this is where, just dink it up again. And I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of ink on my block. I'm going to do exactly the same. So again, the same direction, about a centimetre and midline. Now this time I'm going to turn it back and just stamp second generation in the middle there. And this stamp's perfect, it just fits, look. And a little tip, if you stamp 
where's my i can show you if you stamp too far up here doesn't look right and too far down here so almost you're keeping you're almost looking as though that there's a line there in the holly look and that's the sort of thing you're going for so we'll turn round again and you will do this you can get a routine of doing this and it's amazing how quickly you can do it and i have to say as always this isn't my technique this is one i was taught years ago and um because you know me i don't like I, there's no way i'd claim somebody else's technique i'm just passing this on which is what we do most of the time so again about a centimeter midline give it a stamp turn it back and just keep that shape and as i say get yourself in a lovely I would normally, I love making Christmas cards like this, and I would normally get myself my lovely, um, a lovely nice coffee, a nice caramel uh, macchiata, and some nibbles, and just sit and make a batch of these. Now, a little tip here, you need a second generation there. So what you would do is get your next piece of card, because this is batch card making so we're starting on our next one and what you would do is ink that up come in your centimeter midline bring this one back in finish that one off and then you're ready and look at that shape beautiful then you're ready here to start the next one first generation second before you know it, you've got another wreath made. And it really is that quick. And a little tip, your little pound holly um, on a smaller piece of card, you know, all your little offcuts works just the same. The same way you can do the same stamping. Now, on this one, to finish it off, all I've done is use my watercolour pencils and I've added some of our gorgeous stickles and some Posca splats. So that's your first way. And as I say, for me, I could just do that. Honestly, you'll find once you get into it and you'll see that shape. So we'll pop that to one side and we can get rid of that. Now, I hope that helped. So the next one we'll look at is this one here. So, get a fresh piece of card. And this one, I thought we'd use a different stamp. So, we're using the mistletoe stamp. Just because, again, you can vary these depending which stamps you've got and which ones you want to use. Now, again, the mistletoe stamp, you could stamp the wreath like I've just done. But if that you don't fancy that, I'm going to use my circle masks. And you just want a pencil. And I know Tracy, our, tr our lovely Tracy Dutton, this is her. She loves to do this. So thank you for this, Tracy. And all you're going to do is with your pencil, draw yourself a nice fine line. And you can rub the pencil line out at the end. I must admit on this one, I haven't. I, I found there was no need. And again, with this, you're looking, and if you're worried, you can use your acetate, give you an idea. And if you look at the stamp look, if I bring this up, you can actually see it almost follows that shape. If you keep the stem stalk sort of bit there and the end bit there, you can follow that shape round. So let's have a go at doing that. We'll use our Shady Lane again. And a little tip, with your first one, it's best to start at sort of the, the clock angle of, say, 2, um, 5, 7 or 10. And I'll tell you why, because when you look at a circle, your eye instant will go to the main points of 12, 3, 6 and 9. And if you've made a, well, not a mistake, but sometimes when you do this, it maybe doesn't quite line up beautifully or your first one, you've got a bit not quite stamped it or not met it up properly your eye will pick it up more if it's on these points but if it's here or here especially you won't notice it so i'll do my first one i'll pop that one there 
and we're literally just going to ink up. I'll move round and I'll just line the next one up. But this time what I'll do is with my second generation, I'll just sort of pop it midline. Now this you could do first, just leave it with just first generation. But I, I personally like adding the second. And also the ink's there. So again, first generation will add second there. And I possibly think this is, is a bit quicker if you're not used to doing these type of uh, designs. Again, put the stem there and then in here, turn it round. On the last one, and if we're lucky, look, that'll just meet up perfectly. We'll have a second there. And then just for the purposes of this, let's stamp off a first and we'll just add a second there just for for continuity and again look at that now you could rub the pencil line out like I say but for me I personally don't think you can see it but I would blot the ink if you're going to rub it out blot your ink and so to finish this one off here all I've done is added some of my beautiful liquid pearls the white opal and some Posca splats the good thing about Christmas with snow, you can add lots of Posca splats. So that's another way. And we'll move that stamp and we'll come on to our third one, this one. And this one we're going to use, uh, let's get another piece of card. So I hope you're still with me. We're going to use the inner one, the large of the actual circle masks for this one. And I'm going to come in with the olive ink, the elements. And I'm coming in with my middle stencil brush, so it's number seven. And I'm just going to pop that in the middle there. And what I want to do is just create myself this hue. A, it's giving me some colour in the background, but it will be a guide for me when I'm doing my stamping. So it's just instead of the pencil line. And as I say, it's something a bit different and gives you a different look. So let's pop that so we think that's central. Now my ink pad's quite new. I don't think I've used olive very much. Don't know about you, but I have certain colours that I tend to go for. So I really want to make sure that I've not got too much. If you have too much ink, so I'm going to get it off on my stands and my uh, mask first. And then just gently flick. I think it's the, is it the pine or the Bermuda that I go for? So poor Olive, she's been sat at the bottom of the pile. She needs to come and play. So I start off just by almost flicking. And as I say, it's very gently, gently, because I just want sort of a hue. And then I'm just going to do a circular motion because I want to make it sort of a, a larger area. But I want it quite light, quite wispy. And this is a lovely sort of a Christmassy green. So this is perfect for me. But I do, as I say, my ink pad's quite strong. So I have to make sure I get some on my, my mask first. All the way around. And just take your time. Get this a nice blend. And I found that this size stencil brush is perfect for this. And look at that. File that on the floor, I'll wipe that in a minute. So you've got that, and again, you could batch card make these, you could do all this bit and then all your stamping. So for this one, we'll come in with the cone branch. Like I say, you could really mix and match these. And the Versafine Claire will come in with the pine cone. I think it's a lovely colour, it goes well with the cone branch. Again, this is a well-used stamp. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So again, we'll just look at our two points. And I'm just going to do first generation for this one. <clears throat> and I'm just going to work my way round. Again, looking at the shape. 
Now, if you wanted, you could do the opposite ones. You could do two in first generation and you could add the second. For this one, I just thought I'd show you what it looks like all in first generation. Now, you don't have to do a complete wreath if you wanted. You could leave it like this. But I'm I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a full wreath girl. But as I say, it gives you so many options. We'll pop that one there. And there we go. Now I'm not worried that here I've gone slightly off because do you know what? We're going to add the pound holly stamp, and um, you know, that covers a multitude of sins. And also I've got the um mini winterberry stamp. I adore both these. Now there's the winterberry and there's my pound stamp. Don't know about you, but these mini stamps, they have a, a life of their own. It's a bit like Pippin. I have two of him because he does wander off. So I'll add myself some of these first. Now a little tip with this, for me, it's got a lovely stem on, a lovely stalk, which is great if I want it to hang. But for this type of design, I tend to just put my ink here so I tend to use the corner of my ink pad and just try and just catch to their look. Can you see? And not that long stalk. But that's just me. So I'll add one there. And I'm using the brown. Just want to keep it all sort of brown tones. If I get ink on that, I can just wipe it off. Look. Now I want to add an odd number of these. I'm going to add five. So I just put that one there. I want it to just... I'm going to use that word random again. You know what we're like. It's hard making something look random. Now, if I put one there where I've got that little gap look. So, we'll add another one there. And I think we'll just add one there. And then we're done there. And again, you will take longer doing this. And then back in with the shady lane. And I tend, when I'm adding my <coughs> holly, I tend to, again, use my first and second generation. And I just sort of try and alternate it going round. And just to make it look quite natural. And again, for me, I find it easier look to just move Just altering that first and second where I put. And you're just building. You want to keep that shape. Bear in mind the shape. And because you've got that circle, you've almost got that shape already. Now I'm speeding round here and turning it round. But again, you can take longer. But I'm thinking, to be fair, if you've got a lot of Christmas cards, you do want something that you can almost do that, that post office stamping. There we go. Oh, now, you see, for me, I need something there. So I just want the end, a bit of a sort of second generation there. So you can look at the shape. And if you think it needs, I mean, I think it needs, I don't know about you, but I think it needs something a bit darker. So I can just come in with a darker bit there, look. And then just a little bit of second generation there. There we go. And I'm happy with that. I think that's a lovely shape. Now again, let's just turn that over. You could leave it like this, but I'll just show you how I get those little finishing touches. Really easy, really simple. As I say, we're doing batch card making, so nothing difficult. Our watercolour pencils. And we've got a lovely red. So, and again, it's Christmas. I'm thinking batch card making. So I'm not doing my usual adding two colours. I'm just coming in and I'm just getting my kitchen towel to lean on because I don't want to get a black mark on this duo when I've got it looking so nice. So I will just come in and speedily colour all my berries look with the red. And then I've got a lovely brown and I'm just going to add a little bit. And for me, this just adds depth to these pine cones. And we'll just colour these in. Now again, I don't know if you noticed, but these pencils, 
um, they are watercolour pencils, but they are such beautiful quality. You don't have to use water on them. So sometimes on the pine cones, I just leave them like this. I think it almost adds a nice rustic feel. And it shows up beautifully over the ink. So don't think because you've put the ink there, you can't add your colour. So if I just show you with the look on the red, how beautiful these berries now pop. And again, so simple. Now the little berries on the holly, again, you could leave, but I found I've got this beautiful pen from Lavinia and it's one of the jelly roll, but it's a metallic red. And if you just come in and do the berries, it just adds a lovely hint and again I'm being mindful to lean on my kitchen towel so how are you doing with your Christmas cards I bet there are some of you aren't there you're going to put a comment and tell me that you finished them all I must admit I've, I've done a few not done them all but I do like I think there's something nice about getting closer to Christmas and still having a few to make obviously I don't like having them all to make at the last minute but um I think it's nice getting in that sort of Christmas Christmas feel mind you not long now no doubt somebody's going to tell me how many sleeps <laughs> there we go And then white Posca, just for highlight. Now, mine might not be quite dry, but you would wait for it to dry. And look at that, just that white on those berries. Remember the thing with our stickles. If you want to add Mr. Stickles, it can be a bit rude. He has wind. So we'll put a little bit on our craft mats. See? He's definitely got wind today. He's not even playing. A little bit on my craft mat. And what I'm going to do is just pick some up on my finger because I just want to dab it just round sort of the centre to give a general. And if I dab it, I'm going to get less on and it's really going to just go with the design. I don't want any clumpy bits. I just want a lovely general bit of stickles all the way round. And wipe that up. And then the very last thing, in with our Posca and let it snow. And I just want it over the main design first. And then we'll add some. I think I'll just give him a bit more of a shake. And then we'll add a bit more here. And again, if you batch card making, I find I like to do this um, all at the same time. Because if, if I put the cards next to each other, you know what it's like. When you tap in here, you end up with Posca over here. But I, I want it to look like snow. And I love it when it goes over those right ber red berries. And let's pop the lid on and bring that up to show you so again that was that didn't take as long did it and i think it's really effective i'll pop the paper out of the way and as i say at the minute i'm really into adding a little red bow to my design and a little tip if there was an area if you're just starting off and it's the first time you've made this type of card design and you've got an area and it doesn't look quite circular that's where i'd put my bow find them very useful so I'm hoping that's helped so that's the one we've just made that's the one we made with our mistletoe and then there's the one just with the holly so you can mix and match any of those designs and you can mix and match how much color you add how much glitter but the main thing is, have fun. But these are great, as I say, for batch card ma making. And so quick to do, like you saw. 
So I'm hoping if you are one of the ladies who commented and asked me to make this video, I'm hoping that one of these or even a couple of tips from both of them will really help. If it does, just let me know, drop me a comment because it does help if I know if, if we get feedback here at Lavinia. So you take care, everybody. I hope you have a good week. Have a lovely weekend when it arrives. Have a little bit of chill time. You take care. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.